We are flying out to Puerto Rico tomorrow night. Um, as you may or may not have heard, there was a hurricane that went through there last week, actually not even a week ago, called Fiona. Uh, it kind of messed it up a little bit. Uh, we were back and forth as to whether or not we should actually go or not go, and are we gonna cause problems, are we gonna help, what's it gonna be like? We don't really know. Um, but we got a hold of our Airbnb host in Rincon, and he said that they at least have power from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. and water, which are really our two biggest concerns. Um, so we're gonna go, we're gonna see what happens. By the time we get to San Juan, it'll be, another week will have passed, and San Juan is looking much better on the power and water front than anywhere else. Um, it's gonna be an interesting trip. Uh, a little bit better, a little bit worse, I don't know. Hopefully we can help, we figure, by going there and actually spending our money there, we'll be helping them more than we'll be hurting them. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a very interesting adventure. Let's see what happens. I'm tired, it was a long night. Coffee's good. <laughs> One more flight until we get to San Juan. Then we'll see what it's like. He's tired. Mm. It's been a long night. Yep. It's a San Juan. We are driving to Rincon as we speak. San Juan seemed pretty normal. Uh, we went to a grocery store, bought a few gallons of water. The shelves are actually more stocked here than they are in Denver half the time. Uh, but supposedly the power outage starts probably right around the time that we have to deal with streetlights. So we'll see how that works out. place in Rincon, we found it. It's steamy in here. But don't worry, there's a fireplace in case we get cold. Our first morning was beautiful and breezy. We had a lovely cup of coffee and some avocado toast. The avocados in Puerto Rico are absolutely awesome. What was that? <laughs> That's only supposed to be my issue. I'm the tall one. It was called survival, so I did some research, which really wasn't so easy to find. I came up with three theories as to why it came to be known that way. The first one is that there was an Air Force base nearby, and the soldiers that liked to surf that beach said it was simply survival to surf there because it was really hard. The movie Lord of the Flies was also filmed there, and the cast and crew started calling it survival because of the movie. And the third reason is that it was the site of survival training for that nearby Air Force base. So really, who knows?
Jawadiya Lighthouse Ruins was a cool little piece of history. The lighthouse was built in 1889 with the tower for the light and living quarters for the keeper. It was in operation until 1918 when an earthquake hit and damaged it beyond repair. Another lighthouse was later built in a different location. Turned out that near the Aladia Lighthouse there was an entire recreation area with trails, beaches, and some funky buildings covered in murals. I looked for information on those murals everywhere but found nothing. If anyone out there knows the story, please comment below. starting to rain. I don't want to lose my hat. Uh, so we're overlooking Awadiyya. It's right over there. This is pretty cool. Might even like like this little town better than Rincon, which is over there somewhere on that point back there. And that was thunder. So hopefully we don't get too wet. The Rincón Lighthouse, also known as El Faro de Punta Higuero, was originally built in 1892, but was demolished by an earthquake in 1918. The same earthquake, I would guess, took down the Aladilla Lighthouse as well. It was rebuilt in 1922 and still stands today as you see it here. The park around it is really nice and gives a really good view of Domes Beach, one of the most popular surfing beaches in the area. It's also supposed to be a great place for whale watching, but unfortunately, we weren't there during whale season.
Cueva del Indio, a cave of the Indian, is a sea cave that is known for its petroglyphs. Apparently, it has the largest quantity of them along the coast, painted by the Tainos, the original inhabitants of Puerto Rico. We learned that there used to be a ladder down into the cave itself, but unfortunately it was removed in 2017 for safety reasons, so you can't get down to see them at this time. It was still a super cool place to visit, with more gorgeous views of the ocean and sea caves everywhere you look. The sheer power of the ocean waves and what they carve out never ceases to amaze me. We stopped by La Posa del Obispo Beach on our way back, but it was so windy that we got sandblasted the second we walked onto the sand. La Posa del Obispo means the Bishop's Pool, a name that was given in honor of the Puerto Rican Bishop Juan Alejo de Arismendi y de la Torre. It said Arismendi was returning from the Dominican Republic when his ship capsized close to Arisebo's coast. It's really too bad because the pictures on the internet are beautiful. So we're staying above a pizza place. When you're staying above a pizza place, you eat the pizza. Oh, oh my goodness. They have garlic mats too. Yum. Get that out. So we are in Rincon still. Uh, it's been kind of fun. We're up to 50% power apparently across the across this town. It's getting significantly better across all of Puerto Rico. Um, we're down to like 347,000 people without power instead of 1.2 million. Customers, so, not people. Oh, excuse me, customers, not people. Uh, so it's better. Uh, now we're sitting here watching the Weather Channel because there's another freaking hurricane that is going to devastate Florida here in a couple days or tonight or something like that. Uh, we were just talking about how grateful we are that we didn't plan this trip a week earlier because we would have been flying here in a hurricane and then flying home in a hurricane. In other words, we wouldn't have gone anywhere. So that, that's good. The power situation's been kind of entertaining. Yeah. Before we got here, we talked to the Airbnb host and they were saying, we have power and water, but only till 9 p.m. So actually it seems like uh, the 9 p.m. thing is about in coordination with the pizza place downstairs. So when they shut down for the night, they turn off the generator, no more power for us. Means no more AC to sleep, so that's kind of make, means it's hot. Um, anyways, we were all stoked about, like, the town got power like, yesterday, and it's like, looked around, it's like, everything has lights, awesome. And then all of a sudden at 9 p.m., boom, power goes out here, we're like, that's no fun, because I can see lights. And, like, Lada was able to yell down to the guy below, well, it's like, hey, what's up? And, you know, talk, they called the owner, and apparently they didn't do anything, so I don't know what happened with that, and then this morning at... 5 a.m. when they uh, started opening again. You know, you hear the generator come on and uh, we have power again, but I am crossing my fingers that maybe they'll flip the switch or something like that and get us back on the city power so we have light past nine o'clock. Because as early as we like to go to bed, you know, nine o'clock is early, I guess. 
I don't yeah. think so, but Matt does. <laughs> so yeah, we're having a good midweek. We've gone to a couple of sea caves. I think today we're going to go to the beach and just have a chill out day and not drive anywhere. Driving is interesting because probably about a third now of the traffic lights are still out. Some of them have cops directing traffic, some of them do not. It's exciting. And we're just waiting to see what happens down south to see which route we're gonna be able to take over to back to San Juan when we get there, but that's still a few days away. So that's where we're at. Oh. I don't love papaya, but oh my gosh, in tropical climates, it is delicious. Look how pretty that looks. beach house is a great spot for sunsets. We'd already seen enough sunsets on the beach, we wanted something a little different. Unfortunately, it decided to rain the whole time. We tried sitting at a table outside and had to run for cover pretty quickly. Too bad. Oh, and there was no sunset. The clouds just kind of got dimmer. We had to drive through the little town of Awada pretty much anywhere we wanted to go that required getting on the highway. There was usually a traffic jam at the corner because that was the one station that actually had gas in the area because of the hurricane. We also managed not to notice the plaza with the church until almost the end of our time here. On our way to Isabela, we stopped by La Cara del Indio, which is a sculpture dedicated to a Taino chief, Cacique Mabo da Gama, that fought and died during a battle with the Spaniards in 1511. We continued on to Jobo's Beach, which ended up being our favorite on the side of the island. back to Rincon got real interesting in a hurry. It had been raining all day and all of a sudden we found ourselves driving through a freaking river. Thankfully the cars in front of us were still moving so we figured we'd be all right but oh it was dicey for sure. Watching another gorgeous sunset on the beach, we walked over to the main square. Rincón me encanta. I love Rincón. Isn't that the truth? They do a Thursday night little music slash art gathering on the main square and we were super happy that it was still there from the last time that we went. Another day, another beach. Sandy Beach was near the surf school, where we scheduled lessons for the next day. We didn't stay long because it looked like it was going to rain. We took surfing lessons one day, but we were a little too busy trying to stand up on the boards to figure out how to video any of it. As our time set on our final night in Rincón, we decided to have one last nice dinner before leaving. We went to La Cambija, which we remembered has really good fresh fish from the last time we were here. Dinner was wonderful, and so was our time in Rincón. Tomorrow, we road trip across the island to get back to San Juan. 